Yes, because then yeah, I think you can send me a link. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Thank you for joining us on a Saturday afternoon. I know it's a like a crazy time, but this was the time that we could get two of our three coaches at the same time. Ash is in Utah doing um, some choreography for a team there. So we I just have notes from her to share. Um, and we'd like to make this quick to not take a lot of your work Saturday afternoon. So thank you for joining us. Um, the coaches are with us. Sam and Sarah are the silver team coaches and Nate and Kelly. Are they on? Do you see them? I don't see their picture. I don't know if there's another page. Sorry. Oh, hi, Kelly. Hi. I, you know. hi. I have two pages. Okay. Awesome. So um, many of you will are returning to Lyft and, and some of you are brand new. So we're you know, we will try to address both and uh, make this meeting worth your time. Lyft, as you know, is really unique. It, it requires a unique skill set. And that's why we do a tryout, because it's just not something that everybody can do. And it's not something that everybody is comfortable doing. So that is why we do an audition to make sure that whoever is going to be on the lift team that has the necessary skill sets and strength to do it. The other really important thing on the lift team is a work ethic and willingness to put in time outside of the class. There, you have to do more. Dancers have to do more than just the one hour a week in the lift class to be successful in the lift team. And so we're just going to emphasize that a lot more this year. It's Sometimes it's just been implied and sometimes we haven't talked about it a lot, but there has to be strength work and conditioning work that is happening outside of class. So <laughs> that's something we want you to consider and talk about in your families before you decide to audition. Are you willing to put in time outside of that one hour wait? Because that's absolutely an essential element of the lift program. Um, next thing is there is a waiver that parents, you must sign for your child to participate in our lift program because of the inherent risk in lift. You must sign that waiver and indemnify IBA from any legal action that would, you know, that you would want to pursue because of an injury. We have never had a serious injury and we're grateful for that, but there is, is the possibility just because of the nature of when one person's lifting another person up in the air, that that's a possibility. Um, there are mistakes. Sometimes dancers make mistakes. And so if they're, you know, girls get dropped, we haven't had injuries, but girls have been dropped frequently. And we have had girls that have been concussed from being dropped. And you just need to know that that is a possibility for as careful as we try to be. Sometimes you cannot control every situation. We don't use mats. That's one question I had from um, someone trying out. We don't use mats in our lift. It just doesn't work when you're dancing around. I guess it could work if you're doing a static lift, but we use spotters. So in the beginning, when dancers are learning lifts, spotters are required and the spotters have a really big responsibility. They have to be very heads up into what's going on with the lift and be ready to run and throw out their arms and catch or dive and catch. And so if it's someone's turn to be a spotter and they are messing around, they will be in trouble because being a spotter is as important as being a lifter in those uh, when you're learning these lifts. So we're going to really emphasize the importance of spotters, just re-emphasize. We do, but we're going to re-emphasize that. Um, when there is a mistake, we don't want blame to be thrown. We don't want, well, it was the girl's fault because she fell out of the lift. Well, it was the boy's fault because he didn't grab here on the wrist. There, there's not going to be blame. It's a learning process in these lifts. And we want dancers to take it very, very seriously, what each of their role is in a lift. And we try and make the partnerships as um, effective as possible in size matches and strength matches so that the lifting will work for a partnership. But there's still always things that happen. Um, also, I want to say this. I'm just going to put it out there. In lift, the dancers touch each other in places that we would not normally say is okay to touch each other. 
So when boys are putting girls up into a T-press or another lift, they're grabbing the girls in places on their body that we say, this is not okay if you're in the hallway at school. Do not grab girls there. In the lift class is where it's kind of that controlled environment. And that's where uh, physical contact needs to happen. And I'm also going to say this. This is a quote from one of our former lift coaches from what she told her lift partner. If she said to her partner, this is a direct quote. If I'm falling and the choices are to let me hit the ground or grab my boob, please grab my boob. So I'm just going to say a girl might be grabbed on the way down to the floor in a place that she wouldn't normally be touched. And that's, that's something, if you want to talk about that, um, it's, it's just really part of the whole thing. Okay. So the waiver, the risk waiver is on the registration form. And that's why we left it closed until after this meeting, because we wanted you to hear these things before you go into that registration form and sign the waiver so that we felt that you were informed by us what that is all about. Um, the next one, we are going to do a concussion training with our coaches this year, not just our lift coaches, but all of our coaches. Um, we've spoken with Paul Dye and we haven't done the specifics of what that entails, but he is going to guide us in that. And we think that's a really important element. This will not prevent concussion but it will help our coaches know what to watch for or uh, be aware of if a, if a drop happens. Um, we had a concussion this summer at camp and one of the girls that was dropped. And so we think it's really important thing to be aware for our coaches just to feel confident in their knowledge of that. Next one, this is a change and this will be inconvenient for a lot of you dancers. So, um, you may not be very happy about this, but we do feel strongly about it. And it is this, that dancers in the studio may not practice or work on lift at all unless there's an adult there, meaning a coach or a parent. So not an 18 year old dancer that will not count as the adult there. We, um, I've been there three times this week at the studio and there've been groups of kids practicing lifts. And that is awesome. We love seeing that but it makes me really uncomfortable to walk into a group of kids working on lift and there's no adult there. It's not a matter of trust that we don't trust the kids. It's just a matter of one safety and two, if anything happens, we want a responsible adult there to help take care of it. And now finally, after two years of promising, we actually do have internet now and the cameras will be up. I've said it every fall, the cameras are going to be up and they haven't been, but this year we actually do have the internet now in the studio as of this week. So we will put up cameras and, and we'll be checking those and very truly dancers. If you are in there doing lifts without someone there, um, we will decide what will happen about that. And it could be that you're dismissed from the lift program if you're doing that. Cause I really want to take that policy seriously. Um, I feel like parents would, I talked to a parent yesterday and they were like, absolutely thumbs up. We're good with that. Okay. Next one. Let's talk about the audition itself next week of how it works. We're doing it differently this year, splitting it by, um, team level because what we have found in the past years, now that we are doing three teams consistently, when the dancers all came and all learned the same routine, it just really wasn't customized to what each level needed to be doing at an audition. So we often started, they all learned the same routine and then we would send bronze to the other studio to just kind of do their own thing. So it didn't really work well. So we're going to try it this year. This is something we've talked about with the coaches and, and we think it will be a better process. Gold Lift will be the first audition and those who would like to audition for Gold Lift, um, come do that. If Dancers have never done lift, then they aren't eligible to try out for gold lift. Um, after the gold audition, we will post the list fairly quickly, either that same night or the next morning, early the next morning. So dancers will know if they were not placed on the gold team, they can come try out for the silver team if they would like to do that. We don't know how many couples each team will have. That is not set. So if the gold team takes six instead of nine, then that means there will be more dancers on the silver team. The silver team will be larger. Last, team, last year, the silver team was 
nine couples. And so the silver team was smaller. So the team size is determined after the gold audition and how many gold dancers will be on that. Um, you do, uh, let's see, I just want to remind you, we've said this a lot. There is no auto advancing in lift. Some dancers will be on silver for three years and that is great. That is fine. That's not, I, I don't know what word I want to say. It's not what? It's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing at all. Um, because sometimes maybe it's like someone is a great, a girl might be a great um, lift dancer, but there's not that specific partner on the gold team that works for her as a partner on the gold team. So it's always, you know, also partner specific. The bronze team is unique in that we consider that a um, foundational year of you get one year on the bronze team. And then if you are not placed on the silver team the next year, then, then you're no longer on the lift teams. It's a come work really hard in bronze and then hope to advance to the silver team. But you don't, no one repeats the bronze team. At least to this point, we haven't, we haven't done that because silver team usually is, um, if, if they're not good enough to make the silver team this year, they may or may not be next year. So dancers who have auditioned for silver team and not made it are welcome to audition again the following year for the silver team again, but they wouldn't be placed back on the bronze, on the bronze team. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk, Ash isn't here. So I'm going to talk just uh, briefly about gold. And then we're going to let each coach talk about expectations for their specific team. So for gold team, Gold team has many returning dancers, but Ash wanted me to say specifically that it is possible that not all gold dancers from last year will be placed on gold again. So that is always a possibility. We say that uh, we don't want them to just think they don't really need to make an effort in the audition because they've already been on gold. We want every dancer auditioning to give it their 100% at the audition. So the skill requirement for gold, dancers need to be easily able to do the star as the base or the flyer. And it can't be something hard. It can't be something that people are helping you with. It just needs to be something easily you can get into the star lift as far as lifting goes. There will certainly be other lifts. There are a lot of other lifts, but the star is kind of the baseline of you have to be able to do that. Also, one very big emphasis Ashley wanted to do was that it's not just about lifting. There's also a very big emphasis placed on quality of movement for the gold team. If you've seen Ashley's lift for teams before, they have a lot of dance element in it. And so the dance element is a very big part of the gold lift decision of who will be on that team, of who can do that type of movement, the quality of movement that she is looking for in her dancers. Dancers need to be able to spin on the gold team. They, just, they do a lot of rotations and spinning and you need to be able to spin and be steady in their spinning and be able to spin in sync with other dancers. So a controlled spin. And the third factor is a performance factor. Dancers need to be able to really be performers on the lift team to use a lot of um, facial performance in what they're doing. So those are the three factors outside of lift for gold team that coach Ashley is looking for quality of movement, um, spinning and performance factor. And that is gold. So now I'm going to switch it over to Sam and Sarah to talk about this silver team. Hi guys. Okay. For silver lift, um, Sam and I sat down and we have three different categories of things that we're going to be looking for. Um, the first one is commitment. Like Janie is talking about, um, you need to be able to commit to learning and working on personal improvement outside of class. Um, we expect communication um, with us, us, excuse me, if you guys are going to miss class or be late, if you have an injury, we really expect that because um, we do have sometimes an alternate couple, but if we don't know that you're not going to be there or things like that, it just gets kind of tricky because your partner is specifically counting on you. 
Um, the second category is personal improvement, like I was saying. Um, we really expect you guys to watch the videos that we post. Practice at home. Um, if you miss class, we're happy to meet with you so that you can know the choreography um, and that you and your partner are able to work on things well. Um, third thing is more lift specific. Um, our expectations for silver lift specifically are that you guys know and are familiar with um, doing the basic lifts. You know the names and you can do those easily with different partners. Um, another thing is that you can consistently execute those lifts including the overhead lifts, T-press, Tilted Bird, and Crucifix. Uh, we expect you to be able to do those overhead lifts in order to make it onto Silver Lift. So that's what we're looking for. Awesome. You want to add anything, Sam? Mm, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go to um, Kelly. Kelly and her husband, Nate, coach the bronze lift team. Go ahead, Kelly. I, oh, I'm you? sorry. Okay, you're gone. Hello. Um, Nate is on the other line with our baby, so I don't know how much he's going to talk. Um, so, yes, for bronze, I echo everything that's already been said. Um, commitment is probably the biggest thing that we want to reinforce because um, I hope everyone would commit to all their other IBA teams as well, but this is different because it's an audition team. And I have wanted to say to so many people in the past that really didn't commit to our team. Like I cut another girl for you to be here and she's at home and I bet she would love to be here in your spot because you're not committing to this team right now. So I just really want everyone to realize that because this is an audition team and you're on a team, you're there because somebody else isn't. So out of respect for your team and respect for people who auditioned and didn't make a team, um, you really, really need to commit to the team. So. Um, absences, like Sarah said, coming to practice late, not communicating with us. I would say probably 90% of our absences usually aren't communicated to us as coaches. Um, commun and communicating those to other dancers on the team does not count when I hear it through the grapevine of your friends that you're not coming to class. <laughs> so communicating with us, we're going to start enforcing some policies on attendance this year um, with for like eligibility of dancing. And it, even if our team doesn't have a set alternate, we will find an alternate if we have to, um, just because it's been kind of an issue in the past. Um, so with that, if um, you are planning on auditioning for bronze, but you are not planning on, be on being at IBA the following year, because if you're a senior or you just know this is going to be your last year dancing, we are actually asking that you don't audition because bronze is specifically designed to be a building year and a building team for dancers. The whole, like the goal hopefully is to advance to a silver or gold team. So if your goal is just to come onto bronze because it's your last year and you have friends that you know are gonna be on bronze, then um, that's not really the purpose of the team. So we would just ask everyone to consider that as well. Um, <clears throat> working out is gonna be huge. I think every year we say that and every year our dancers underestimate a little bit how much conditioning they're going to need to get through a lift routine at the end of the year when they're tired because at competitions you're not going to be 100% fueled you're usually exhausted and that's when you have to do it and when it counts the most um and so being able to lift and dance for an hour is usually not something people are conditioned to do when they start our team so um you're committing to more than just an hour or an hour and a half a week we really need you to be putting in effort every day so girls, this is something I haven't said before in the past, but if you don't have your splits already, if you're auditioning for bronze, it's going to be a requirement to have both of your splits by the end of the year, especially if you want to advance in a lift team. I think that just has to be standard for lifts and for quality of movement that is wanted on the silver and gold teams. Um, a good attitude. We love that. I... After past experiences, it's more important to us to have dancers that are going to have a good attitude and are going to be willing to work and take feedback over dancers that have a lot of natural raw talent. Um, because we've had both in the past. We've had dancers or teams that didn't, it did not come like easily to them 
the lifting or the dancing, but they were willing to work really, really hard. And I would take that over somebody else that it came really easily to and thought that they didn't have much to learn. <clears throat> um, one of the other things is we had an obscene amount of like injuries, not just last year. I feel like since we've been coaches for the age group of kids that we have dancing with us and we've noticed some trends. So I know that you guys are. Let me clarify, Kelly, not injuries at lift team, but kids who got injured outside of team. Yes. yes. And they come to class and they can't participate. Um, I know that you guys are in high school and I didn't sleep that much in high school. So I understand that it's hard, but um, it's so important for our dancers to get adequate sleep and hydration and to eat. And it's really interesting to see how many people don't do those three things. <laughs> and um, I, so that's just like going to be foundation. And then in what other, whatever other activities you're doing, please just be really mindful of your bodies and try to take good care of them. <laughs> because um, lift is hard because if your partner's injured, then you don't get to dance and it's not your fault. Um, and we've had people that have literally been injured all year long and it's been really rough. So please just be mindful of your bodies. And as well as in class, um, don't do anything stupid. I've had to stop so many boys from lifting other boys as they're like all injured. So just don't do anything stupid. If I ask you to stop doing something, please stop doing it. And just, yeah, be mindful of your bodies. Please take good care of them. Um, anything else, Nate? Yeah, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. One thing, parents, this is for you. We've had students, hey, hey. <laughs> We've had students who by the end of the year, what, eight months of dancing or so, cannot continuously warm up. They have to take breaks to breathe because they're out of shape at the end of the year. So parents, will you please help us keep your kids in shape and help them get stronger outside of class? That would be great. And the other thing I forgot to say too, bronze auditions will be different from silver and gold auditions because for the most part, we're working with dancers that we haven't worked with before because we don't coach on any other IBA teams. So um, they'll probably run a little bit longer. And um, at the end of when we do like our dance and our lift sequences, we're gonna have a session to see what everyone can max out, like push-ups, sit-ups, planks. We'll see how flexible everybody is. So we are gonna do that at the end of auditions as well, just so everybody's aware. Um, but I'll try to do it at the end so you guys don't have to burn out on push-ups and then try to lift it up. So. Hey, thank you. Thanks guys so much. Um, last, last thing is just a reminder that when we make the list for the teams, it's not just a matter of taking six boys and six girls. It's really the pairing that we decide. So it's very specific. We take a boy and a girl that can be partners. And so if a girl doesn't make the team, sometimes it's hard because she'll tell her mom, well, blah, blah, could lift me. And, and so that mom contacts me and I said, yes, he could lift her, but he could lift four girls and no other boys could lift some of those four girls. So we have to have a boy that can lift every girl and do it well and not with a strain. So that is sometimes the really hard thing is that we have to make sure that we have six partnerships that work and not just six boys and six girls that, that could do it with somebody. It has to be very specific that way. And that that's one thing that makes the lift audition harder, I think, is because it's not just your own ability, it is partner dependent on lift. Okay, that's all that we had to share. Do any of you have a question that'd be general for the group? Um, we can take a question if you do, or if you wanna just contact me or the coaches later, if you have specific questions, we could do that. Oh, Ash, are you on? Oh, do you, Ashley, do you want to say something? I know you just got on because you've been in a dead zone. Hello. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Are there any questions? <laughs> okay. Nope. What?
All right. We will just plan to see you all next week at the auditions. Um, we love the lift program, but we want it to continue to be a safe experience. We think it's a very positive experience. This is a very, very unique thing for young dancers to do. Um, other teams are, you know, more and more teams are starting to do lift, but IBA kind of started the trend. And sometimes we forget that it's not something that everybody can do. And so our lift dancers, you should feel very proud of our, of yourselves for what you accomplish in this. We hope it gives you additional boosts of um, confidence and self-esteem because this is something super cool that you are able to do. But there is a price to pay to become successful lift dancers. And we want you to be willing to pay that price in, in your time and in your effort. Um, see you next week at tryouts. Do not forget to fill out the registration form. We'll go in and open that link right now. So that will be open because if you show up to the tryout and you're not, we don't have a registration form for you, we'll have you do it right then. Your parent will have to go on and sign that waiver form before we'll allow you to do the audition. Okay. Thanks everybody. Have a great rest of your Saturday. I don't know. Thank you.